Hey everybody, welcome back to the Clean Energy Edge. Last week, we looked at how America's solar supply chain is being rebuilt at home, factories, jobs, and new manufacturing capacity. Today, we turn our sights to the other end of the chain, how much electricity we're going to need and whether we'll have enough to meet those needs. But before we unpack all that, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bell before you go. So for nearly two decades, U.S. electricity use, it really barely moved, growing just a fraction of a percent each year. But that has certainly changed. The U.S. Energy Information Administration, also known as the EIA, now projects electricity demand will grow around 2 to 3 percent annually through the 2030s. Now, that may not sound like much, but it is a huge shift. Historically, the U.S. grid grew by less than half a percent per year. So this is five to six times faster growth than we've seen in decades. That increase alone, the new consumption, that means we'll need roughly 100 to 150 gigawatts of new generation capacity over the next decade just to handle the additional load. To put that in perspective, the average large power plant, a modern combined cycle natural gas facility, that produces around 500 megawatts. So that's the equivalent of 200 to 300 new large plants or thousands of renewable and battery projects simply to meet new demand. And again, that's before we talk about replacing what's already out there. So roughly 20 to 25% of the existing U.S. coal and natural gas fleet is expected to retire by 2035, according to the EIA. Those plants will have to be replaced too, not to add new capacity, but just to keep the grid where it is today. So when you add replacement needs on top of new growth, the real number we'll need to build is far higher, and the clock's ticking. So the obvious question is, how do we meet all this new demand? If we need hundreds of new power plants worth of generation in the next decade, where does that power come from? Well, let's look at the options. So fossil fuels, natural gas, and coal, they still make up about 60% of the U.S. electricity, but expanding that fleet, it's not simple. New gas or coal plants take years to plan and build. In fact, steam turbine backlogs are now five to seven years long before new units are even available. That means they're not sitting on the shelf. Keep that in mind. Five to seven years, if we started building today, means late 2030 or 2032. Fuel price volatility also drives up cost, and financing for fossil projects is drying up as global investors move away from carbon-intensive assets. And while gas has historically been a bridge fuel, it's a bridge to nowhere if we can't build them fast enough or keep them affordable. What about nuclear? Well, it's reliable, but painfully slow and expensive. You have to look no further than George's plant Vogel. That's the newest large-scale reactor in the U.S. It came online seven years late and over 20 billion Yes, 20 billion with a B over budget, finishing at more than 140% above its original estimate. And what about small modular reactors, or SMRs? Well, they're still in the demo phase and won't be commercially viable until sometime in the 2030s. So here's the reality. You can't solve a 2020s power crunch with projects that won't be generating electricity until the 2030s. That's why clean energy, solar, wind, storage, it's not just a sustainable choice, it's the only scalable choice. Utility scale solar and wind can be built in one to two years, not a decade. Their levelized cost of energy is now around $35 to $60 per megawatt hour, and that's without subsidies. That's far cheaper than new gas, coal, or nuclear. And because they don't rely on volatile fuel markets, they offer long-term price stability. Distributed systems, I'm talking roof mount solar, community microgrids, and battery storage, they can come online even faster while improving local reliability and reducing grid strength. Clean energy isn't just about emissions anymore. It's about speed, cost, and resilience. I mean, if we want to keep up with the growth that's already happening, this is the only path forward that actually works on the timeline we've got. So what are the stakes if demand outpaces generation? There's a few. Reliability risk. So that means peak loads may exceed supply margins. That equals blackouts and brownouts. There's a cost risk. Electricity rates will rise as utilities invest in delayed or emergency capacity. And we're already starting to see this. There's the economic development risk. Data centers, factories, EV charging infrastructure, these all need reliable power. If the grid falters, that growth stalls. 
And of course, there's this policy risk that we have. I mean, if we're going to be depending on a drill baby drill philosophy and building more power plants that burn stuff to generate electricity, we better get used to really high prices and lots of power outages. I mean, we're just applying math here, simple math. So here's the takeaway. We're entering a period where soaring demand is colliding with constrained supply. The good news is America's clean energy manufacturing base has come a long way. I mean, we're finally making solar panels, batteries, and other critical components here in the U.S. again, and that's real progress. But manufacturing is only half the equation. Now we have to deploy fast because the question isn't just how do we build clean energy, it's how do we keep the lights on while we're building it. Thanks for listening to Clean Energy Edge. We'll catch you next time.